Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Y'all look good. <laughs> look at the person next to you. Say, you look marvelous. <laughs> there you go. That's my favorite. <laughs> Let's pray together. Oh, God, open us up. Open eyes and ears. Open hearts. And then open hands. So that we might be generous with our hearts, with our love, with all that we are to one another. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So um, I, I want us to hear, uh, we're going to look a lot at this scripture today. So um, if it's in your bulletin, I hope you'll keep it in front of you. But I'd like to, to go through the first one in, as a whole to begin. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came on everyone because wonders and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Two weeks ago, a group of uh, office workers, a, a, a team, uh, set out in Chaffee County, Colorado on a team building exercise. They decided that they wanted to bond together as a team, and so they were going to hike to the top of Mount Shivano, which is 14,000 feet. And uh, they realized that some of them were fitter than others, more fit, and so they divided into two groups. One group was going to go just to the saddle, which wasn't all the way up. The other group wanted to go all the way to the peak. So they set off at dawn in two groups. And when they got to um, uh, the saddle, one fellow decided he really wanted, he was in the saddle group, but he decided he wanted to go all the way to the, to the summit. But the summit group was already well ahead of them and already gone, so he set off on his own. And the group that got to the summit reached the summit uh, at 11.30 in the morning. Um, they spent their time up there, and then they turned around to come back down again. Well, um, the fellow on his own did not reach the, uh, the summit until uh, mid-afternoon. And um, the other group had already started down, in fact, was almost all the way down by the time that he got to the summit. And when he finished his time at the summit, he started down and he got disoriented and went the wrong way on the trail. Turns out that the fast group didn't know he was coming, and so they had picked up all of the markers that they'd set on the way down. And he got lost uh, up there. And at some point, uh, about 4 o'clock, no, earlier than that, he, he put a pin down and said, I'm, I'm lost. And he sent it to his friends. And they said, the, the, uh, the summit group said, no, no, you're in the wrong place. Go back up to the top. Turn and go back to the top. You'll find the trail there. And so he went back up to the top. And uh, then at 4.30 in the afternoon, he sent another pin and said, I am still so lost. And they uh, said, well, here's what you got to do. You got to move over. You're not too far from the trail. And they told him, told him where to go. Well, um, a storm came up. He lost cell coverage. And uh, at 9.30 that night, they finally called 911. And they said, we, we, he's lost. And so Chaffee County sent their search and rescue teams out. They sent drones up, but it was dark and the storm had come. He spent the night on the mountain alone in a freezing rain. Um, in the morning, uh, he, he, kept, he walked far enough that he finally got a little bit of cell service and was able to send a pin, and the search and rescue team came and got him and brought him down again. So what I, what I appreciated the most was what the Chaffee County, the leader of the Chaffee County Search and Rescue said to the press. He said, uh, this is going to make for some awkward conversations in staff meeting during this week uh, in the weeks to come. Here's the message. The message is uh, don't try and go it alone. And the message is don't leave anyone behind and let them go it alone. Right? We, we, we are, I mean, if, if indeed we're to be together, let's be together. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, on Labor Day weekend, a woman uh, checked into her corporate office, badged in on Friday morning, 
And um, on Tuesday afternoon, uh, they found her dead in her carol. Um, they said it did, it did seem that something had started to smell. We thought it was a plumbing issue. What would it be like to be so disconnected that no one noticed for four days that you not connected with anyone? I, I, just, I just think that, you know, it's uh, the brokenness of, of being alone is so difficult. What we have today are these two different passages of Scripture. And the first comes right after the Holy Spirit has come. To, it's, it's early in the life of the church, 50 days after the resurrection. The, the, the Holy Spirit comes to the believers. And, and the new, this early church is, we get this incredible picture. It, it, we often use Acts 2, 42 through 47 as a way to describe the church at its best, at her best. Have you ever seen one of those Instagram photos of a family that is just so, look at them, they're so happy. They are on vacation together, they're enjoying one another. And we can say, so there's a cynical part of us to say, oh, they're not really that happy. They're faking it. No, I don't think so. I'm just saying this is the moment that they're at their best, right? That there, there is a sense of unity and they're bonded together and they're having fun and, and it, it, it's going well, right? We often use uh, Acts 42 through Acts 242 through 47 as a way to describe what the church ought to be at her best. And we, we, you, you can see our five inside ha out habits as you read it through it. L let's look at it again. I'm going to go through it a piece at a time. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. So our first two habits, we pray and worship, we study the Bible, Right? Awe came on everyone because many wonders and signs were being done through this, uh, the apostles. This is our outreach. We give ourselves away in generosity and service, right? God uses us to, uh, to bring about uh, the kingdom here on earth. We are God's instruments to bring about those wonders and signs and move the world towards what God intends for it to be. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. We give ourselves away in generosity. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home, ate their, bread, ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. We make friends. We build relationships. And finally, and day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is evangelism. We tell our stories. And God draws people into the community. What I want you to see more than anything is not just all those specifics. What I want you to see more than anything is just this, this feeling, this sense of being connected to one another, a sense of unity, a sense of common purpose, a sense of love. Well, fast forward uh, 30 to 40 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you come to, uh, so we don't know when Hebrews was written, but the letter to Hebrews, uh, we don't know who wrote the letter to Hebrews, but most uh, scholars believe Hebrews was written between 60 and 70 AD. So 35 years or so have passed. And um, the author to Hebrews is speaking to a, a church that seems to be struggling a little, right? Here's, here's listen again. He says, um, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some. But encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. It seems that the author of Hebrews has noticed that worship attendance is down. Has noticed that, uh, that, uh, uh, that people seem to have... Um, drifted away from their spiritual disciplines and their faith is wavering. And he's saying, look guys, we got to get together. We've got to hang in there. You see, here's what it feels like to me. I don't know, you, you may have a completely different spirit. It feels like there's a part of us inside us that knows that we don't want to be on that mountain by ourselves that knows that we need to be connected to others, that knows we want to be in a sense of unity and of love. 
and yet we feel these forces that are just wanting to pull us apart right these forces that that we are and and we get we're resisting them we're resisting those forces we're trying to be in relationship but we get weary we get tired and we find ourselves just sort of giving in to those um Robert Putnam wrote a seminal book called Bowling Alone in the year 2000, and um, he's re had to reprint it over and over and over because it's been uh, so well read, and each time he adds some new stuff to it. Bowling Alone speaks to the fact of the demise of American community. Uh, the people no longer joining bowling leagues, no longer, I don't know, maybe pickleball will save us. Uh, I, I have to say, everybody seems to want to play pickleball. But uh, people don't join bowling leagues. They don't join the Rotary Club or the Lions Club. They don't go to church, right? That, the, that sense of feeling like you want to be, you are a part of a community, the willingness to step into those things has drifted. In his newest book, he makes a, just a very uh, simple statement. And uh, he, says, he says this, in greater numbers than ever before, Americans have stopped believing that we are all in this together. Wow. You know, we can, uh, I, was, <laughs> I was listening to a radio show the other day. On, I was driving, and it was one of those call-in shows. And they, 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 you know, you got to have something to talk about. And so the, the uh, host said, uh, tell me what the hardest thing is about uh, starting school, and the calls came in, things like this. You know, it's the, it's the pickup lines for kids that block all the traffic, and I'm driving along, and there's no, and all, these, all these people waiting in line to pick up their kids, and it just snarls the traffic. And somebody else said, it's trying to get where I'm going, and they're all the school zones. Somebody else said, well, I, I just hate making lunches for my kids every morning. And I'm like, Wah, wah, wah. This is, uh, this is a lot of people who are like, what about me? What about me? What about me? When we're not thinking, what about kids? What about kids? What about kids? Right? There's this, just this sense of, 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 of these forces that want us to just be self-interested. Now, let me just be real honest here. We can talk all we want to about all the forces out there that are wanting to pull us apart, right? We can talk about politics and polarization. We can talk about technology and corporations. We can talk about, uh, you know, all the things that you want to talk about that are part of society. But what's really pulling us apart is in here. It's, it is that the things inside us that we can't seem to shake. I don't know what keeps you. I want to just ask yourself, what keeps you from really leaning in to relationships? to community. And maybe that's not an issue. Maybe that's what you do. But there are, what, what is it inside us? And let me just lift up a few. Fear. Fear. He, he, we are, um, well, listen to the scripture that we just read. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. I don't want to be provoked. I, I'm, I'm not interested in someone coming and telling me, this is what you ought to do. I'm not interested in, in having someone else judge me. I, I, frankly, I, here's one of my biggest challenges. I don't, I don't like the feeling I have inside myself when I find myself judging others. And I say, that is not a good part of you. And so I, I, I think, I don't want to put myself in that position, and so I, I don't want to take the risk. Right, we, it, it is a risky experience. And we're going to have some, there's going to be some yuckiness as we lean into relationship, as we do the hard work. And we just frankly don't have it in us. And so we say, I'm just going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that I don't think many of us are like, well, I'm just going to go it alone. I think most of us just say, I'm going to narrow my circle. I'm going to narrow my circle to the people I'm really comfortable with. This might be my family. This might be my closest friends. These are my people. And I'm just not going to work on any new people, any new relationship. I, I'm afraid I don't want to be in that position that could, be, that could be risky for me. That's one reason. Here's another one. Weariness. 
This is a, this is a, a, a nicer word than laziness, so I used it. Uh, but um, it takes so much work to be in relationship. What's he say? Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Here's what I think happens. Sometimes we do choose to lean in, and it isn't fruitful, right? We sign up for something, and it doesn't, it doesn't go great. We, uh, we decide we want to, to lean in, and yet it doesn't come easy, and so we sort of give up on it. What he's saying is, look, this isn't supposed to be easy. We come into this, and we've got to hold fast to the belief that this is what God is intending for us to do. We have to hold fast to that confession that faith, hope, and love abide, but the greatest of these is love. So we've got to, to, to but we just get tired of that. And, and so we say, gosh, I'm just not going to step in. We, during the uh, pandemic, we had all of our wonderful times of social distancing. And there was a part of us that went, this is so nice. I don't have to talk to anybody else. I can just be here. And the time for social undistancing has come to to do what the scripture calls us to do and to be in relationship. Here's, here's the last thing I, I want you to see. The thing that keeps us maybe, the force inside us is just habit. Not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. If I were to tell you one reason when I talk to people who say they, they gosh, I haven't been to church in a long time, if I see them at the grocery store or an event, and they say, usually they think I already know. And so they, they start telling me why they haven't been to church in a long time. <laughs> I didn't ask, uh, because frankly, they might have been on the front row, and I just didn't see them. But uh, they, uh, they start telling me why, and it's usually something like this. Well, you know, um, my daughter got sick, and so I didn't come for a while, and I just got out of the habit. Uh, I used to go to Sunday school every week, but uh, then after the pandemic, I just didn't go back. I just was out of the habit. I mean, it's just part of, I mean, habits are powerful pieces of our lives. So we get out of the habit. So friends, what's the answer here? Well, I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's not all that complicated. It's um, push through. Don't give up. Lean in. Keep trying. Work at it. I mean, that's the, that's, if, if there's going to be a payoff, it, it is, as um, Jennifer Bubel, our, our former chief of staff, used to say, everything worth doing is uphill. You, you, you have to, to work at that if you're going to get the payoff and persevere at it and stay in that relationship because that's where finally the payoff begins to come is when you experience that sense of being together, of being connected, of, of uh, being with others. After, after worship last week, a man approached me in the gathering room and said, um, hey, uh, and I, I knew him okay, we were, we were sort of friends, and he said, I'm signing up for men's life. Um, and I said, oh, great. He said, even though it's at 6.30 in the morning. And I said, yeah, it, it is. He said, well, I'm, re I'm just retiring. I just retired, he said, and uh, all of my friends are work friends. Everybody I know, I've worked at uh, MD Anderson for, um, for decades, and I know all those people, and those are my best friends. And I, I need some different friends now, so I'm signing up for Men's Life. And I thought, what an obvious, uh, intentional choice to decide to do something. We work so hard, I want, uh, that sounds like I'm whining, I, w I want you to know that um, our desire is to make every opportunity for you to find a place to find community, to join an adult Sunday school class, to uh, be a part of a small group, to uh, join in scripture shared and do scripture shared with a group, to be in a, a Bible study, to do disciple Bible study, which is life changing, that's getting ready to kick off, to join in one of our choirs, to uh, work with our, our teenagers, to teach children Sunday school and be a part of that team, 
to just lean in and, and build relationships uh, with others. If you're online, we're trying to offer uh, opportunities by Zoom. So there's a disciple Bible study by Zoom. We have scripture shared that, we, that you can do by Zoom as well. So we just want very much for, uh, for, to encourage you to take that step and, and find that place where you will experience a sense of belonging, of feeling like these are my people. I shared this in our, our um, fall guide, but I, it, it, it's a good enough illustration that, and I figured oh, everybody didn't read it. Um, uh, when I was in college, it was uh, Saturday night fever time. You remember those of you? No, some, most of you don't. Anyway, those of you who know Saturday night fever, it was disco life when I was in college. And so we went to the clubs and danced. Um, and I was really crappy at it. I forgive my language. I was really bad at it. And um, we, we danced. Um, and then I got older and we got married and I had kids and I became a pastor and I became inhibited. And I, I quit dancing. Dee and I both quit dancing. And so we would go to people's weddings and we would sit at the tables on the side of the dance floor and we would watch people dance and people would say, come on and dance. And we're like, no, 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 I don't dance. And it, we did that for a long time, really decades. We just didn't dance. So my, uh, the first time one of my daughters was to get married, she sat us down and said, dad, mom, you're going to dance. Uh, well, I'm expecting it. You're not going to sit and watch. You're going to dance. And she said, I don't, know how, I, don't know what, I don't know if you have to drink a lot. I don't know what you have to do, but you are going to dance. And so we said, yes, ma'am, we're going to dance. And so we did. And th it is so much fun to be with this group of people on a dance floor. I mean, flailing my arms around in various ways, uh, looking silly and a hundred ways, and then they put on uh, um, Sweet Caroline, and everybody goes, Sweet Caroline. <laughs> See, there you go. You know it, right? Everybody does it together, and you're jumping up, down in almost unison, and you feel like, I am a part. This is, this is great. Uh, it's just a picture but you'll never have that experience of being, of belonging, of being a part of something if you sit on the side and watch. Well, I just take a step, just a step. Gracious and loving God, you didn't make us to be alone. We've, we pray for all of those who are lonely, who find themselves standing on the side without those people who love them and care for them without people to, for them to love and care for others. And we pray for those who are going it alone. But God, we pray that you would speak into each one of our hearts, that you would help us find out how to, to step into a sense of community, a sense of belonging, a sense of being a part of, of, uh, of your community, of, of the body of Christ, that that would be that place that we discover that we really do belong. We pray all this in the name of Christ. Amen.